What's up, guys? Before you guys mention in the comments, I know that PAX East is going on right now. It Today is the last day uh, for PAX East, but I will not be including any of the PAX East information in this video since this is strictly just the Xbox Magazine information. After I've gathered up all the information, I will be making a separate video for the PAX East uh, information. The first thing that, that jumped out to me when I was reading this was that it's not like completely new stuff. A lot of the stuff was already talked about in uh, PAX Prime of last year. So I was like, okay, this a lot of this stuff I already talked about. Um, I will put provide links to these videos, to the PAX Prime videos, um, and all that information was thanks to obviously Bioware for doing the panels, uh, but also Nerd Appropriate for recording the panels. Um, so without that, I would have never been able to make those videos and the information wouldn't have been able to get to us firsthand. So I'm not going to talk about everything in the Xbox magazine for that same reason because I'm like, I already talked about this. Um, but I will be talking about the stuff that I haven't talked about. I'm just going to make a few clarifications that I think are important to address. The first thing I want to mention that I think is very important in the way that, that, that you perceive the, the production of Dragon Age in Inquisition is that Bioware has been working on this game for years now. It's not like like they started working on it like last year or something like that. Because a lot of people, I still see their concerns are that EA is going to like cut production time and they're rushing them. And oh my god, uh, they just announced it like what last year officially and it's only been a year. But it's like no, they've been working on Dragon Age Inquisition since like during Dragon Age 2 time. So the whole thing about EA rushing them is is not really, I don't see it an issue here because if EA was rushing them, this game would have been out already. Bioware was showing the, the official Xbox magazine a demonstration on medium settings, which would, which would pretty much give you a visual, uh, a, a, the, the visualization of how it would look like on a 360. Because a lot of people say, oh yeah, well that they're showing that, they're sh what they're showing is on PC. But even in this setting, they were saying that it, it, it outpassed the way, the detail uh, and the natural look of even Skyrim. Now Skyrim wasn't the best looking game, but it, 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 when it came to the environments, it was, it was pretty good. It was it was not bad for for its time. It was pretty damn good, especially for the 360. Now this is just a pre-alpha. Again, I have to say this is a pre-alpha on medium settings. I think the most important and the biggest piece of news in this magazine, in this article, was where we're gonna go, the the the, the areas that we're gonna visit in Dragon Age Inquisition, because that's one thing that Bioware has been keeping very hush hush. Now there has been a lot of speculation from fans. Multiple times the Xbox magazine says that this is an open world and I need we need to clarify that that it's not it's not a full-on open world Bioware has said it multiple times that this is not a full-on open world this is a semi open world because they want to also focus a lot on the storytelling and the cinematics and the character development because that's that's what Bioware is about not so much on providing you with an open world like like the Elder Scrolls has I'm not sure how they're gonna limit it but it's not gonna be like you could go freaking anywhere you want and like do anything you want but it is gonna be somewhat of an open world um more so especially with like what we're hearing more so than we've ever had in any dragon age uh, uh game and and any bioware game i think to date there will be jumping and there will be horses jumping is like the most crucial thing and so many games do not include it especially rpgs i don't get that like 
always, always include a jumping button, please. <laughs> and not so much to jump on things, but I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm that type of person when there is a jumping button, I'm like running down the path and just like jumping and jumping and I look like my character's skipping or something. <laughs> I don't know, I find that you get to places a lot faster. Add in a horse, a jumping horse. Oh my god, Bioware, we need a jumping horse. <laughs> Some of the enemies which we've already uh, seen in the past uh, are that were reconfirmed are Tevinter Mages, Stone Hurling Giants, um, and completely overhauled dragons. Large enemies will also have multiple targetable points along their bodies. This sounds really cool. Like you could totally go all out with strategy on, on this, this new system with the dragons. I wish, I don't know if they're doing this, I doubt it, but I wish they did some kind of like being able to jump on large animals. Um, again with the jumping. I like to jump. Kind of like a dragon's dogma where you like jump on, on, the, on the animal and then you like crawl up and like <clears throat> like stab him on the back, dude. Dude. I'm just saying that I like that. I don't, I don't think they're, I don't know if they're going to do that for Dragon Age Inquisition. But you can target uh, different areas for the large enemy. In this case, for example, if you, if you damage a dragon's wings, they can no longer fly. Or if you, uh, if you damage one of their legs, they'll like hobble around or um, they won't be able to jump. You'll be able to throw jars of bees. You know... I don't like bees. I hate bees so much. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I'm not surprised because knowing Bioware and the devs and how lighthearted they are and how awesome and like I love their humor, I'm not surprised that they're including a jar of bees to throw at your enemies. <laughs> but I would have loved to have been sitting in that in that decision making <laughs> conference i want to know who who came up with this like i want to know who went oh my god guys <laughs> we gotta be able to throw jars of bees <laughs> man i'm gonna freaking spam that <laughs> i'm gonna spam the jar of bees you can't spam potions but damn you can spam those bees though <laughs> I'll take it. And you know what? I think it's going to be so fun going around with a jar catching bees. I'm all for it. It's all good. <laughs> this is another thing that was talked about in the, the PAX Prime. So if you want to know more about it, uh, I'd go more into detail in my videos. Uh, but the armor weights are no longer class specific. That is, you can stick your rogue in a mage's robe as, as easily as you can put your mage in heavy armor. So this is... This is this is huge for Dragon Age. Um, in Dragon Age Origins, you were able to put a mage in higher armor if they were an arcane warrior. I don't think there that 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 actual requirement is in in Dragon Age Inquisition, where it's like, well, yeah, mages could wear hi higher armor if you're an arcane warrior. <laughs> I don't think you could do it like right off the bat. You probably need to uh, level up a little bit. Probably depends on your constitution or maybe your strength, kind of like it's been in the past where it's like, I I used to have an issue with that. <laughs> I wanted to wear like this really cool armor, but my strength was too low and I was like, hail to the no. I think you create the mage that you want from the beginning. I think that's how it's going to be. Like, I think it's going to be like level up whatever stats you want and you could become that type of mage. There will be no DLC party members. So now let's talk about the bald elven mage. His name is Solas, uh, not Solas, as some people have mistaken. He serves as an expert on the Fade. I, I, I remember reading somewhere else that um, he, he, he's a little bit taller than, than, you, than elves are usually. And two additional companions that have been finally, actually, legitimately, officially confirmed are uh, the Iron Bull and Sarah. The Iron Bull was slightly confirmed uh, back in past Prime as well. One of the developers kind of 
mentioned it a little bit. So I don't. I, that was probably n not、um, supposed to be released then. Iron Bull is just my kind of character, dude. That is my kind of. Missing an eye. That's like something that I would write. Like, it, I don't know if you guys have read my the fan fiction of uh, uh, Scottish War ninety two and、uh, R L Chills and myself's、um, Mass Effect fan fiction called、uh, Re Retaliation. I wrote a Turian that that pretty much got his eye shot off. So I'm like huge about characters that are like tough and like scar ridden and like freaking all. Mercenary, and I love characters like that. I mean, if you follow the D and D, Owen, he's pretty much like that too. He's like full of scars and burns and stuff. So, I I love characters that have a past that you want to know about. They're introducing a new and refined system of character interaction, one which splits the difference between the dialogue wheels found in Mass Effect and Dragon Age Two, and the more diversified text options from Dragon Age Origins. I do remember、uh, hearing one of the Bioware devs saying that they they really wanted to add in like if you wanted to hug somebody you could go ahead and hug them like if you wanted to hug your romance you could just hug them kind of like the mods for for Dragon Age Origins were so I think the emotional wheel the reaction wheel just adds more to your Inquisitor and adds more special moments along with more real moments. Oh my god, that's gonna be so good. That's gonna be so good. I also remember reading somewhere or hearing somewhere that they were they wanted to try to in, incorporate, and I think this is probably the reaction wheel,、uh, slightly kind of how they did it with Mass Effect, like the 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 the,、um, the Paragon and the Renegade interrupts. Like they wanted to find a way of introducing that in a different way. Uh, where you could just react the、uh, right away, and they, they did. They talked about that in the demo, where they were like, you could, somebody could be talking to you, and the Inquisitor could just like walk away, like you would just choose to walk away. So it, so it sounds like they're trying to incorporate what they've done in the past and kind of merge it in Dragon Age Inquisition, which could open a lot of doors for how much control we're gonna have over our Inquisitor and how how personal the Inquisitor is gonna be to each. Each each、uh, player, so super exciting. This freaking blew my mind <laughs> when I heard it back in the Pax Prime pa panel. One of the developers said, "Just just like threw it out there like interactive party banter," and I was like, it, "And here it talks about that again. They don't go too much in detail, but they do say more dynamic party banter. So I don't know if it's like you're gonna be listening to banter and if." You want to chime in? It, it, you're probably gonna get like a little dialogue wheel or something, and it's gonna say how to respond to what they're talking about. Or if you're part of the banter, like they did more of in Dragon Age Two,、um, you're gonna be able to say whatever you want, or you could just have your Inquisitor respond neutrally or by default. But That's gonna be so awesome, and that's probably not gonna be for all party banter in the whole game because that's that's a lot. If they do for all party banter, then freaking props to Bioware for putting that much effort and detail. But I'm thinking it's just gonna be every now and then.、Um, but that that's super cool. That's super cool. It just adds 
like another level of awesomeness to the party banter of Dragon Age. I talked about this in my, uh, I, I believe in my previous Dragon Age news uh, video where um, Mike Laidlaw confirmed that the, the Inquisitor was going to have uh, two voices per gender. So the male Inquisitor was going to have two voices that you could choose from and the female Inquisitor was going to have two voices that you could choose from. Mike Laidlaw says it's a matter of size that uh, they couldn't offer you like freaking two voices per gender per race because that would just be way too much. Uh, he said that it, uh, it, it, if, if they were to do that, it would probably have to ship in 14 separate discs. This is interesting. I've seen some games do this, uh, and I think it's, this is what they're talking about, where it says that, uh, your, your character creation is, is basically in the prologue. The prologue is the same for all players. The character's appearance, class, and dialogue responses during the prologue chapter will instead fill in the details, and in particular inform how other characters respond to you throughout the story. So I think the prologue is what's going to set who you are, um, like your background, it's gonna kind of set where you're from, I guess, uh, because there are no pre-made origins like it was in Dragon Age Origin. So I think it's all gonna be molded um, slightly, just to start with. It's just gonna be molding like a starting character point in the prologue, and then the rest of it is up to you. Whatever you do in the rest of the game is who you're gonna be. The The Inquisitor is the sole survivor of the Fade tearing apart, and it says presumably as a result to to what happened to to this event, you are, are granted like these powers. Um, I, I, this is kind of what I was saying in the beginning, but slightly different, where um, you're granted these powers where you could close rifts in the fade, like those rifts that open up, and we saw some of this in the demo, um, because there's tears, not just the huge tear, but there are tears everywhere through, like throughout Thetis, I believe, and um, you you have this 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 ability to close them, but I think there's more to it. I think there's has to be something to do with the dragons as well, because of what what we've seen tweeted about you having this this power of the old gods or something like that, or or something having to do with dragons. Um, and then you've got everything the Inquisitor has pretty much has like the insignia of a dragon. But this is why you are put into the, the, the position of Inquisitor or the leader of the Inquisition. And because of this very reason, no matter what you are, no matter if you're a dwarf, an elf, a, a Kunari, people might not be happy about you being the... the the, the leader of the Inquisition, depending on what you are, uh, but uh, they can't argue. Like, it's like, okay, fine, I won't be the leader of the Inquisition. <laughs> Go find someone else, just close those rifts. <laughs> Good luck. Now, this is where um, the Xbox magazine kind of misquoted, I think, the whole endings thing. The 40, staggering 40 possible uh, endings. It's not that... Um, simple, like it's not like oh you got you choose between forty endings or you get you have the opportunity to get forty endings. 